Several concerns. First of all, uh, some of these uh, are uh, the whole idea is that the czars is part of Obama's uh, scheme of centralizing all the power right around him and in the White House. Uh, the way the, the executive branch of the government works is you have uh, a, a bureaucratic norms uh, in which the various departments have their responsibilities. Their heads of those departments, the cabinet members, are responsible to answering questions for Congress, uh, they, both houses. Uh, they also uh, are, uh, are uh, confirmed by, by the Senate uh, so that there's a certain feeling of responsibility there uh, towards uh, the Constitution and to, and to Congress, at least. Uh, in addition, of course, the President takes an oath uh, to take care that, that the laws be, uh, be uh, properly administered. Uh, but this is a way of getting around that by having people responsible only to him, uh, many of them not confirmable because they're part of the White House apparatus, and, men, and uh, all of them, or most of them, uh, also not subject to this questioning by Congress because of their White House status. And so we today have uh, uh, 44 identified czars, uh, identified and given that ter term by uh, people in the news media who watch the White House. Uh, I don't think that the label czar is actually conferred by the, by the president personally, uh, but the, the responsibility and the authority is conferred by him on these people. So we have czars for everything. We have more czars now than in the imperial Russia did in its entire history. <laughs> and we have, we have 44 czars, and they range from anti-Semitism czars to Asian carp czars. We also have tarp czars, <clears throat> so we have carp and tarp czars. We have, <laughs> we have a climate czar. I'm not sure what the climate czar does, uh, but I think it's possibly... It adjusts the thermostats at the White House. Well, either that or it's, or it's, or it's related to to Obama's statement early on in his, uh, in his presidency when he said that he made the, the, the seas roll or not roll, if you remember <laughs> that, that famous statement. So the climate czar may have something to do with that. We have the domestic violence czar. I'm not sure if for or against, but uh, we, have, we have both the food safety czar and the healthy food czar. Uh, we have the tobacco czar also, in case people get too healthy. Uh, and then it goes down the line. I mean, we, uh, there's a czar for everything. The, the problem is that it, it interferes with the proper administration of the various departments to have these czars who are the people closest to the president who can carry out his will. And it's as close to a monarchy as we've been uh, since the days of George III, uh, which was just prior to the revolution. Uh, and I think it, it's a very serious thing in which the entire uh, structure of our government has been manipulated to, to address the particular wishes of this president who says, we can't wait. In other words, I can't wait to get my will done. And that's not exactly the way a, the way a, a democratic republic is supposed to work. The most important lines in the Declaration of Independence is that the only legitimate government is one in which it operates with the consent of the government. And that's why I think this whole apparatus, the things we've been talking about. Now, if you look at another aspect that you haven't mentioned yet, and that is, uh, when, and uh, Orrin Hatch did make reference to part of this. When this president can't get his way with Congress, uh, then he works through the agencies of the executive branch. Uh, for example, uh, when he couldn't get cap and trade uh, through Congress, the EPA then, uh, out of, without any authority in any statute, uh, created uh, carbon dioxide as a pollutant under the Clean Air Act, uh, something that had not even been contemplated when the Clean Air Act itself uh, was uh, was enacted uh, when he couldn't get the card check through uh, the NLRB as uh, through uh, Congress. Uh, in other words, this idea that people could just sign up on a card uh, rather than having the secret ballot elections. Uh, then he, the NLRB, as as Oren mentioned, uh, created these snap elections where there's no time to explain the issues to the people. Uh, when he couldn't get the Dream Act through, uh, which was to allow illegal aliens uh, to go to college. Uh, and legitimize their, their uh, position, uh, then the, the uh, uh, Customs and Border Protection people changed their deportation rules uh, to, to essentially allow people who would have been subject to the DREAM, or benefited by the DREAM Act to stay here. Uh, when he couldn't get the net neutrality through in communications, uh, then the FCC changed their rule, uh, actually uh, on Christmas Eve, uh, put forward a new rule. In other words, it's a matter, again, of showing the disdain for Congress by, in a sense, manipulating things around them.